Welcome back to How to Souls. My name is Rach and today we're going to go over how to get a divine weapon to stop the skeletons in the catacombs from constantly respawning because once they're killed with a divine weapon, when they're down, they stay down. Particularly handy on the Gravelord Nito fight just to have a divine weapon in your pocket ready to tackle the skeleton ads. So there are three ways you can do this. You can, of course, level up any weapon, well, most weapons, any Titanite weapon to plus five and then get the Divine Ember from Blacksmith Andre, give him the Ember and I believe a green Titanite shard and that'll let you make any plus five weapon into a Divine Weapon. That is, yeah, I mean, that's the long way, but I'm about to show you two super quick ways, weapons that you can just pick up off the ground and they're already divine. I will go over weapon infusion in another video. So if you're lazy like me, listen up here. The first method is the fastest one. You can do it right at the start of the game and that requires you to have picked either the thief starting class or the master key starting gift because it does require the master key in order to, to get this right at the start of the game. Another thing to note is that this first method for this first weapon does require a modest amount of investment into faith. You will need 14 faith to be able to use this sword. Eh, not a lot, but if you did start as a melee centric character, you'll probably find you've got quite low faith. Here I started as the thief, so my faith is already at 11, so it's only three points of investment to be able to have a much easier way through the catacombs. And that is from Firelink Shrine, we're gonna head down to towards Blight Town. Don't worry, we don't have to go into Blight Town, but in order to get down to the Valley of the Drakes from Firelink Shrine, we do need the Master Key. So bear that in mind. If you didn't pick the Master Key, the other weapon that's very easy to pick up is in Anor Londo. Um, so if you wanna skip ahead to this time code, I've got chapters in the video, uh, so you can just skip ahead there uh, to find the Anor Londo version. Uh, it's around halfway through the game, so you can, if that works out better for you, you can. I usually end up using that method because the weapon that you get from Anor Londo is the Occult Club. So when you reverse it and make it divine, it's uh, it's actually at plus five. So it's, it's the better way to do it. However, we're right at the start of the game on this character just to show you this first method. So when you come down the first elevator, you turn to your right and then go in this second elevator. Oh, sorry, it's not an elevator. It's like a tower, spiral tower. This door will only open from this side with the master key. So I'm just going to grab this little soul here. This is the Valley of the Drakes. So you can go across the bridge here and through this... Uh, damp tunnel to get to Blight Town. That's like the quick way into Blight Town, but we're gonna go just along the ridge here into the Valley of the Drakes across this rope bridge until you can see the undead dragon up ahead. Now that is where we're gonna find the straight sword of Astoda, but has a divine modifier on it from the very beginning. So especially if you're building a faith character, this is a weapon you're gonna wanna grab anyway if you've got the faith to use it. So. We have our two thingamajimmies here. The one on the right is the Dragon Crest Shield. The one on the left is the Straight Sword. So we picked up both of those. It's not a big deal that we died. <laughs> not a big deal. It's actually just a faster way back to the bonfire, really. We got what we needed. If for whatever reason you die before, you can pick up both those items. Prioritize the left for the Astora Straight Sword. Um, but yeah, so here we are. We've picked up, there we go. So it does physical damage, magic damage. It requires 14 faith to use, uh, but it does have 120 divine modifiers. So that means when you strike the killing blow with this sword, the skeletons will stay dead. That is how to grab the straight sword of Astora, a pretty good early game weapon for a cleric, but also a pretty good early game weapon if you're looking to tackle the catacombs, get the right of kindling, uh, get the fire blacksmith. I don't know, for whatever reason you have for wanting to go into the catacombs this early, this sword will help make it a little bit easier. For the second very easy divine modifier weapon to pick up, you will need to have progressed to slash finished Anor Londo. This weapon is a lot better, but again, it's like it's quite far through the game. So uh, I'm just going to get us to the bonfire where you meet Solaire. You'll know the one I mean. Okay, so for ease, I'm going to show you from the Anna Londo bonfire, let's have a rest. This is the bonfire where you first meet Solaire. He might still be there, he might still not be there. But yeah, so from this bonfire, here's how you find the occult club. Starting from the Anna Londo bonfire, 
uh, we want to head out. My Anna Londo is dark, so don't worry if yours is a little bit brighter. It's just because I killed Guinevere. We're going to head through here. Deal with this first uh, straight sword knight here. We can parry him. I'm rocking a pyromancy only character, so that's why I've got my combustion. Now we're going to want to go through this door on the left, which opens with no bother. So you'll see inside there's not actually anything here. Or is there? Bum bum bum, go up to the fireplace, either do a little punch or a roll, and it's actually an illusory wall and we can head down. Don't drop down because it's actually quite far, uh, so you get fall damage from that. We're just going to go down the stairs into this nice dank basement, which is nice and dank in dank souls. Uh, if you stick to the sort of right hand side of the wall, there's no enemies in here yet. Um, but yeah, so we will find one, two, three, four, five chests. Now, one of these chests is not like the others, and I'll, I'll spoil it for you. It's this one here off by itself. Uh, you can tell by the chain and from the fact that it literally has teeth and is breathing that this is actually a mimic. You want to equip something pretty strong, get ready, and then just go for it. Get him down before he even knows what's happening. <laughs> And then your treasure, your reward from that mimic is the occult club. So if we go and look at that in our inventory, occult club, there we go. It does physical and magic damage. It only weighs three, it's quite light. Uh, it does strike damage, which is really good against armored enemies. It's also good for knocking smaller enemies down, like the skeletons in the catacombs, for example. A, 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 you see where I'm going with this? Um, because it is occult, it doesn't have a divine modifier, it has an occult modifier. But all you have to do is grab the divine ember, which you will get after fighting the moonlight butterfly boss in the dark root garden. Take the divine ember to Andre the blacksmith and you will get the ability to make divine weapons. But in this case, we already have an occult weapon. Now the way that weapon upgrades work in this game is that you take a normal weapon, you modify it to be divine and then you modify a plus five divine weapon to be occult. So occult is like the grandparent where divine is the parent and then normal is the child. So we can actually reverse an occult club and turn it into a divine plus five club. Now this is why this is the preferred weapon if you're looking for a divine weapon because it's like I said before, it's got the strike, it's already gonna be at plus five and it's just what I like to grab after Anne Orlando just before heading to the catacombs. So here we are back at the Undead Parish. We're gonna go and say hi to Andre. I have done a butterfly already on this playthrough. If you don't know where the Moonlight Butterfly is or how to defeat it, I'll link my Moonlight Butterfly video for you in the cards above now. That is to get the Ember. Uh, so, talk to Andre. Mighty fine flippin'. Oh, I got a large Ember for him. But there you go, you'll have the same voice lines for giving him the Divine Ember. Uh, modify equipment. So we're gonna wanna go to the far right, which is to, as you can see from the sort of cuddly arrow, to reverse an infusion. And that takes the occult club and it turns it into a divine club plus five. So undo ascension, which is like the smartest thing to do here, really. And now we have a divine club plus five, which is definitely a very, very good weapon for tackling the catacombs with. Uh, it's got very, very low stat requirements. It only requires 10 strength to use. Um, if you have the advantage of being a faith, character you will find this weapon does even more damage um but a few strikes i would say with base faith like two or three hits on a skeleton and it goes down particularly useful in the nito boss fight uh if you are the last one to hit the skeleton with this divine club it won't get back up again it'll make your life a lot easier and there you have it that was two very very good options for divine weapons to use to help you get through the catacombs uh, again i would recommend going with the occult well divine club over a store of straight sword purely because of the low stat requirements but it does require you to hold off on the catacombs until after halfway through the game just be patient it is in my opinion the easier way to do things however if you are a faith character please do pick up a store of straight sword if you have the master key it's a pretty decent weapon especially for how early in the game you can get it Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe for more Souls tips videos just like this one, as well as walkthroughs on all types of Souls content. See you in the next one. Take care.